Hi guys, um, we are here on VidCon Live to talk about using social media for real change. And I've got a really awesome group of panelists here to talk to you about that. Um, we've got Nima Tang, Taylor Cassidy, Sarah Lugor, and myself. And I want to go around the room and just sort of introduce ourselves um, as we go. And I've got Nima right next to me. So Nima, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Um, for those of you who for some reason don't know who you are, I think you're infamous, but introduce yourself anyway. Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Nima Tang. I am a content creator focused on beauty and I focus on beauty for deeper skin tones and I do it on YouTube and Instagram. That is pretty much me. Awesome. I love your stuff so much. Like I love, I, I, I watch your videos to make sure that I'm getting the right foundation. So oh. thank you for all you do. Um, Taylor, let's go to you next. Hi everyone. My name is Taylor Cassidy. I am a content creator on TikTok and Instagram and I create black history content and positivity content. And I'm very excited to be in this conversation today. Thank you for being here. Um, Sarah, let's go to you next. Hi, my name is Sarah Luger, also known as Trex Dumpster. I make content, mainly comedy content, on Twitter and also on TikTok, of course. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk today. Yay! I'm so glad we were able to do this. Um, I wish that we were at physical VidCon, but I'm glad that we're all social distancing and you know staying safe and, and, and making sure that we can flatten this curve and everything. So thank you for those of you guys who are tuning in. We're going to be having a Q&A portion hopefully later on in this video. So if you're watching this live, please use the hashtag um, VCNowSocialForChange. Um, on Twitter. So we're going to be going through those and trying to find questions um, later. So yeah. Um, so I want to start this conversation out by just asking people when they felt the responsibility to use their platform for change. Um, and we'll just go to whoever feels like talking first. <laughs> Um, so for me, I felt the need to start using my platform for change. I think it was around when I was like, 25 I started pretty late in the makeup game honestly so I was around 25 and um from 21 to 25 I was building up all of my experience and learning about makeup and trying to figure out what products work for my skin tone and then going into the drugstore everyone's got their drugstore story so going into the drugstore and realizing there's really not many products for me um and I think that's when I started realizing that I can actually make a difference in this industry. And that's when I started creating my content. I, people, I honestly didn't expect it to do what it did so fast, but I think it just happened the way that it happened because it was undeniable now. It was like literally like in your face, here it is, this is what's happening, this is what's going on. And I think that's when I really started realizing like, okay, this can actually be bigger than me. So that's when I started. Yeah, we always, it's, it's, we always feel, I think as YouTubers, like the need to sort of fill in the blanks. And mm -hmm. um, I think that that's, all of us sort of have that like, okay, there's this thing we want to talk about that's not being discussed. Let's use our platforms. Um, let's go to Taylor next. When did you feel the responsibility to use your platform on TikTok, which is, you know, a really, it's, it's the kids are on it. I don't know nothing about no TikTok. Um, but I know all the kids love it and I know that you're, you're doing um, the Lord's work. So um, tell me more about what, why you felt uh, inspired to use your platform for change. Yeah, so really it started whenever I was in class in my history class and uh, just every time we would bring up any sort of aspect of black history, like American history, um, I would always hear like comments about like, you know, insensitive comments around Black history or just things that were very, very ignorant. And um, whenever I got on TikTok, I was like, I really want to educate people, but I want to do it in a way where they'll actually like listen, actually find it interesting. And so I felt a sense of responsibility because I didn't want people to keep on loving Black culture without knowing the context of it and where it came from, the pain as well as like the victory. And so that's when I really was like, okay, if I'm going to dedicate myself to something, I want to dedicate it to something that's going to have purpose and something that's going to last. So that's whenever I really said, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm really going to put purpose into this. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, 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 I love history. It's such an interesting like thing. Um, one of the reasons why I do some of the stuff that I do is I, when I went to college, um, I took some, some classes about racism 
And I was kind of shocked by like everything, like literally everything. I was like, I thought after Lincoln freed the slaves, everything was like cool, you know? But <laughs> you read actual history and you just find out so much. Um, and some of my videos um, early on were, were kind of about black history stuff, just out of just the sheer like need to share, you know what I mean? Like. I learned this, you, you guys, if you're taking similar classes that as I am, you're probably not learning this. Here's an easy way for you um, to, to find out that stuff. So I think it's really cool that you're doing that for the TikTok generation. Um, let's go to Sarah. Tell me how you felt inspired to use your platform for change. So like people love to politicize like black skin in general. So like I found myself talking about like political issues slash social like justice issues like without even realizing it and a lot of the time it was like I would say something and then people would comment and be like oh my god thank you for bringing this into awareness and then it's like oh I didn't even realize I was really doing that and then so the more people that I realized were actually listening to me the more I was driven to like speak out about social change and stuff like that and like to talk about like issues that are going on in my personal experiences and also listen because like a large part of like learning is listening to others so it was like a lot of just like consuming like a lot of like text and a lot of just like conversations with people and then also being like hey guys I learned this um if you guys want to talk about it like we can talk about it but also like um it's it's just like it's kind of like turning into like almost uh, without even realizing you're doing it so yeah it was it's it's been a good like um kind of experience for me myself I think because like I've never been in a position of like uh, where you are so many people are looking at you and are looking at you to like almost idolization and are looking at you for information and stuff like that. So it's like been super important for me to be like completely updated and then also like well-informed because you don't want to put out like incorrect information. And then, so yeah, I've just, it's been, it's been good. Like it's been very like, yeah, good. I would say is the best word I can say right now. Yeah, I, I totally, I, I totally get that. It's funny. I started a YouTube channel when I was 15 years old. Um, I've been on YouTube. I'm turning 30 um, next month. So at a, at a, at a, like in not too long, I can say I've been on YouTube. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, you know, when I started my YouTube channel, I really just wanted to kind of like hang out and talk about my day and, you know, just the silly things you want to talk about when you're a teenager. Um, and I personally, I always, I think because of how uh, unique I am in the atmosphere of YouTube, um, I'm a trans woman who's been on YouTube for longer than most of the trans bloggers I know. Um, it, I feel this responsibility um, to, to have some of these conversations because who else is, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I know for me, um, I always think about how much I, I mean, I like talking about this stuff, but sometimes I just want to come on and talk about, you know, literally any other thing, you know? Um, and so I'm really curious um, how you guys have sort of dealt with that, that sort of responsibility, that, that feeling of like, okay, I have to, I want to talk about, you know, this, the, the newest silly, you know, something or other, but I feel like I need to have a conversation about, you know, what's going on because of what's going on and because of our platforms um because i know something i'm personally dealing with now is girl i'm tired you know like i'm tired and um i wonder how we all dealt with fatigue um and how much you guys have felt the the sort of pressure to talk about things even when you probably don't want to so um yeah i'm curious how you guys all have, have dealt with fatigue in these conversations I think for me, it's something that I've actually talked to my therapist about recently is because um, us as Black creators, we have this other entire side to us that we can't ignore and we can't hide. And unfortunately, we go through so much more things that we have to talk about um, that affect us in a different way. Like I can't, it's not just makeup to me, you know, it's not just applying a wing liner to me. It's about the fact that I have to fight for my beauty and I have to fight for the fact that my beauty exists and it's so much more and it puts this extra weight on us. And we don't think, of, we do not prioritize our mental health enough as black creators. Like, I think it's hard enough being a creator, just being in this like platform where people are constantly looking at you and constantly looking for your 
opinions or your thoughts or what you think about something, even just like outside of what you actually do, the content that you actually create. So adding that extra pressure of now you have to speak on social issues because it's not just beauty or it's not just like whatever we all do. It's so much more. I think as Black creators, we really, really have to find that fair balance. I think for the longest time, I didn't have that balance. I always felt like I had to speak on everything, especially in when products were coming out and they weren't like inclusive. Now it's like, okay, well, if you don't want to be inclusive, I don't have to waste my energy on you this specific time. Yes, there's some products that I'm like, okay, I have to speak about this because I want to, but it's okay to kind of be like, right now I need to do me for a sec. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it can be hard to find that balance for Mm -hmm. sure. I, I, I I feel that all the time where I feel like there's a never ending, there's never ending conversations that happen about this stuff. Like these things are always happening. And it's like, you do at a certain point have to like measure. All right, is this worth my reaction? Is anything gonna change if I say something, you know, maybe some people just don't want, you know, black customers. And that's just maybe what it is at this point. Um, Taylor, I'm curious how you've dealt with fatigue. So really, I deal with fatigue by like remembering that while, like you said, Nima, we have this way of having to uh, have the responsibility of talking about these social issues and really bringing to light and keeping the awareness up. And that gets really tiring because sometimes it feels like as a content creator, you're defined by the social issue when really you're not, you're still yourself. And so there's actually a quote that Liza Koshy said one time, it said, she said that don't put yourself in a box and be afraid to break out of it. Mm -hmm. And I really try to remember that whenever I get, you know, really fatigued, whenever I feel like I have to do this, I have to do that. I have to deal with this first before I can break out and create something innovative that I can hit on that social issue, but still remember myself. So really, I put down my phone and I take some time to really remember my mental health or remember that while all of this is a really big responsibility, I still have to put me first because I can't give anything that I already don't have. You know, I can't give somebody something that I don't have myself. It's not going to be genuine. It's not going to be real. So I take a lot of time uh, out of social media to remember that uh, this is really big, but it doesn't have to be all on my shoulders. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I I remember, I, I'll never forget, I, it was like, it was years ago and I was at um, Disneyland on my birthday. And I, this was back when I was like really sucked into Tumblr and I was having some like argument on Tumblr about something. And I was literally at Disneyland clapping back at people while standing in the line. Like I was so consumed by it. Um, and one of the things that was really helpful for me was to take a full year off of YouTube, just like to take a break, like to uh-huh. not feel like I needed to do anything. And of course, you know, there was that initial loss, you know, when you, I mean, I, I think we all have this relationship with our platform where we like, if we don't post regularly, you know, we might lose our stuff, but you do sometimes have to weigh that like, okay, am I gonna take this break that I know is good for me? Or am I gonna stress myself out? unnecessarily and and I think people sometimes really underestimate the value of taking time for yourself taking a break and not feeling like you always have to say something and do something Mm -hmm. um let's go to um Sarah have you dealt with fatigue um yeah I I tend to like go through these spouts where it's just like oh my god I need a break because like of course like consuming all that negative media is not healthy for you or especially for your mental health and it's like I will d- like go through like phases because I really like Twitter like I use Twitter like probably m- more than any other platform and I'm constantly on there because it's like the easiest for me to stay updated but Twitter also has the most like violent media and it's like the most like um you'll just see like so much negative <laughs> news in the day that it really starts to weigh on you and you're like oh my goodness and then like Let's say I, like I tweet and I'm like, oh my God, I had a banana to eat today. And someone's like, why didn't you talk about this? And then you're just like, I just want to talk about my banana for two seconds. <laughs> so it's like, sometimes I'll just do these phases where I'm like, I'm taking an all, all platform break for a little bit. Like you guys, I'll be back when I feel better. And it's really cool because like my audience seems to like 
be really receptive to that and so that's that's just like the main thing is just getting away just like the rest of you guys said because it gets a lot yeah yeah it, it can get really 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 overwhelming and you know it's funny like when I took my break and came back I was able to attack stuff in a more precise way, in a healthier way. I had better habits and everything, um, you know. So yeah, that, that, that break definitely changed my content. Um, I'm really curious because we're all going through this pandemic. We're all sort of dealing with the various, the various different things that come out of it. Um, and I'm sure that in those situations, um, I mean, we've seen so many things happen um, just, just in the, the scope of all this, all this being inside, you know, we had, George Floyd, we had um, Breonna Taylor, we've had a lot of things happen that I'm sure have only felt, that felt like even more intense and even more um, stressful because we're all sort of um, socially distancing and quarantining. So I'm really curious if the pandemic slash quarantine has changed your guys' content at all in any way um, for either better or worse, or just maybe it's added new nuance. So. Um, I wanted to talk to talk about that for a second. So the beginning of the pandemic, like I like kind of just was like, oh my God, this is the time to create. And I just smacked it out in the butt and I was creating all the time. But then over time I realized I was like, oh my goodness, this is taking a lot of emotional toll on me. So like the pandemic is definitely like I'm a comedy content creator, which is like my main thing. So people look at me to laugh, but like I can't make people laugh when I'm in my room like, oh my God, I don't wanna do this. <laughs> like I'm like kind of really tired right now. So I started creating a lot less. Um, it's, and like putting more effort into my videos also as well. And like maybe like taking care of myself a little bit more because like in the beginning of the pandemic, we, I don't think any of us thought we would be here for this long. And so like, it was kind of like, the beginning was like waiting to be able to go back again. And so I just like have kind of like shifted my habits to be a little bit healthier. And then that's like kind of like growing as it goes. I think it was the same for me too. I think in the beginning of the pandemic, I was kind of like, oh, everyone's gonna be at home. Who doesn't wanna be at home all the time, right? Um, but then as it went by and it kept going and extending, I was like, I need to get the hell up out of this house. Like I was just like, I can't do this. And um, I think now with content creation, it started off okay, just like Sarah said, it started off okay. And then as time progressed, you're like, we're not going anywhere. Half the time people don't even want to put on makeup. Half the time I don't even want to put on makeup because I'm sitting in the house. So I think it turned into just kind of like focusing on what do I want to create now? I kind of like shifted this mind and created this mindset of like, what else do I want to think about? What else do I want to do? And um, that's really where I've been with content creation. It's really been the same story for me, like beginning of the pandemic. It was like, I'm going to get serious. I'm going to create all these innovative things. And by April, I was like, okay, I need to like not be on my phone at all for like the whole month. <laughs> and um, really it's, it's the same thing um, as Sarah. I really took less time to create and instead of like creating in quantity and creating in quality. Nice. Um, and so really this time is I've really taken to really experiment with content and really like try new things, do different things, whether they flop or not. <laughs> and really learning about, you know, what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. I think that's how my content has changed a lot more experimentation. It's really hard to create new content. I feel like I get a lot of my inspiration from like new experiences and new places and like, like maybe like events we'd go to or like maybe even like going to Target and like seeing something funny. Yeah. When I'm in my house all the time and I'm looking at the same things all the time and doing the same, like, it's like, where am I even, where, where am I supposed to get ideas from? Exactly. So that was like the hardest. What about you? <laughs> Sorry, I keep having these. I, I keep cutting out. <laughs> I keep losing um, service. Um, but I heard half of that. I'm sorry about that. Um, technical difficulties. Um, my quarantine, um, it's been interesting. So I've, in so many ways, I have really tried to not, I've, I'm very, this is going to, hopefully this doesn't sound like a downer. I am deeply pessimistic and deeply nihilistic. <laughs> um, 
And so in so many ways, I early on was like, you know what, I'm just going to not let this stuff get to me as much as I know it's going to. And I'm just going to focus 100% on my work. And I'm just going to jump right in and focus and create things that make me happy. Um, because the kind of creator I was for years was I would talk about every single time an unarmed black person would get killed. I would talk about every single time, you know, we saw racism exp expressed blaze, um, you know, blatantly. And I, I could tell even like before I took my break that that was getting to me, you know, that that was mentally and emotionally getting to me. Um, and coming back from my year long break, I said, you know what, I'm gonna just refocus. I'm gonna change the way that I talk about this stuff. I'm gonna be on one hand more personal, but also put more emphasis and more importance on the political work that I do create. So I started making less political work and I started making things that, you know, listen, I'm a black trans woman who's polyamorous, who, you know, has all these interesting things. Everything I create is gonna be political to some, in, in some way, but I wanted to do less reactionary work and more work just speaking about what it's like being me because I felt like that was what was missing um, in a lot of my content, especially just the way when I became a more popular creator, I was trying not to talk about myself. You know, I was trying not to be, you know, someone who shared a lot about their lives, just talking objectively about these racist things, these transphobic things, these misogynistic things, you know, all these things. Um, and so I was trying to distance myself um, so then I kind of flipped it on, on, on its back and now I'm more personal. Um, and during quarantine, I, I just for myself personally, I, I mean, I, I made a video about why I'm not talking about the Black Lives Matter stuff that was happening. And the biggest thing I said was, I'm tired, girl, girl, I'm tired. And I feel like I've said everything I can say, you know, the shit I said in 2015 applies to the shit I would say in 2020. So I just felt like if I'm really, even though we should be talking about this stuff, if what what new do I have to say? Unfortunately, not a lot of things have changed, which feeds directly into my nihilism. Um, so you know, um, I did in during quarantine. I was like, let's just let's just do stuff. And and unfortunately, I guess for me, I kind of needed quarantine because I was the sort of person who, I, girl, I went out so much. I would go to several parties a night. If you watch my videos before quarantine, almost every single one of them is me drinking wine, talking about how I'm on my way to another party after this. Um, and I just went out a lot and I didn't sit with myself a lot. I didn't, I didn't have those internal conversations with myself enough. Um, and so quarantine kind of forced me to do that. And of course, you know, all the shit I said, I didn't have time to do before quarantine there's really no excuse now you, you, what you have nowhere to go you know so I started to just I guess focus on my stuff a bit more um and of course while I am talking about political stuff and things you know like I made a video I, I'm uploading a video today about the recent hate crime that happened in Hollywood um and that's really depressing I but while I am doing stuff like that I am also just having more fun because I start thinking about what what do my what do the people who subscribe to me need to see in their feed? Do they need to see yet another conversation about police brutality, something that we've all been talking about, or do they want to watch like me just talk about how shitty Fifty Shades of Grey is? You know what I mean? Like, I think that um, a lot of a lot of YouTube for a lot of people is escapism, and I think that when you're different, when you're you know a person of color, LGBTQIA plus, you, it, it can be hard for you to feel like it's escapism because you 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 feel like you got to talk about all this stuff, um, and I certainly do. Um, so one of the questions I wanted to ask you guys actually is, if you didn't talk about all these things, like if if let's just imagine a world where, you know, race wasn't a thing that we all had to discuss, where you know police brutality wasn't always happening, where shade ranges just were inclusive, you know, where we all got clear concise black history like what kind of content would you create would it be similar or would it be different from what you're currently creating now i'm really curious about that that's, that's difficult crazy. wow <laughs> i feel like eventually i would have fallen into this position because i've always been obsessed with fashion and beauty so eventually i would have just like 
figured out a way to find myself right back where I am right now. Mm. Yeah. I think I would also be in the same position. Cause like, even in, when I was in high school, I was a class clown. Like everyone was like, oh my God, Sarah's like the, f- the funny friend. So then I feel like I would still probably be here. Just like not bringing in, cause again, they do politicize our lives. So like, even no matter what type of content we make, we just, it's like another, an, an extra facet that we have to do with. So I feel like I'd probably just do the same, just a little less politicism. I think that's really interesting because I think that the core of my content is just like storytelling. So I think that I would find some way to tell some sort of stories. And that's, I think that question is really interesting because I think about a lot if racism did exist, would there be something like in its place? And I think about uh, this example a lot more than I probably should, but like hair color, would hair color be? like in its place, like the equivalent of racism toward people with brown hair. You know, I think about that a lot and it's just something that's really interesting to me if racism didn't exist, would there be something in place of that? Mm. Yeah, just wanna throw that out there. Yeah, (laughs) I feel like it's so natural for uh, people to like have, there's something, there's gonna be something, you know? Like, yeah, maybe we don't talk about racism, but you know, but I don't like brunettes. So it's <laughs> something like that. I think that's really true. I'm sorry, Sarah, you were about to say something. I cut you off. Sorry about that. Um, I was just saying, like, if we do get rid of, like, if, if hypothetically there was no racism, would we be, like, kind of, like, changing, like, human nature? Like, would we just be, like, mm. like the perfect people and, like, apathetic? Because then, like, uh, well, not, like, apathetic to, like, other people's emotions, like, completely empathetic to everyone and nice and kind. Like, would we even have content creation like I'm just like now I'm in a loop I'm like what what would we be doing I I see a world where we're not held back then if there isn't racism like these creators that grow so much more than us or get get pushed further than us because we're held back because of our skin tone um I see a world where it's an even playing field and it's it's just crazy to think like that's insane like racism is the basis of everything like it's kind of yeah kind of, like talking about it's like how many different things are affected and how many like different ways our lives have like turned and twisted because of it and so it's like to think back and then back to the conversation of like how much pressure we how much added pressure we have on us as content creators because we right. have to talk about all that like me and my friends talk about this sometimes but how like black creators have to be above and beyond so like another a white creator could do the same thing, but we have to do it and also sing. And we also have to dance and well versed. We have to be funny and we have to do this well and we have to be pretty. And like and that's just to like barely be at the same line. And it's yeah. 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 I actually kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit because um I know for me it's it's been kind of maddening to take up the space that I've personally taken up because when I first started making videos about politics, I was one of the only like lefty leaning people doing it. Like there were other people, but like there weren't a lot of us, especially a lot of people who were feminists, like o- openly outwardly feminist. And I got a lot of shit for that. I got so much harassment, so much bullshit. Um, and, you know, it, it never pushed me off the platform. You know, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this since I was 15 years old. It's a habit. Like if, if I stop making YouTube videos, just assume that I've been replaced or something because it's just such a part of who I am, right? Um, but when I left and came back, it, there was a whole new breed of basically white YouTubers saying the exact same thing I was doing and not getting the degree of um, shit that I got. And that was hard for me to digest because we both had the same goals we both had the same arguments but and sometimes they were even talking about my experiences but for some reason when a white person says it they they take off in a, in a totally different way so I'm, I'm curious how you guys have sort of dealt with um being black on youtube and sort of dealing with that sort of feeling of of you know knowing that you can work as hard as as you as you do but you're you may never be as appreciated as a white creator i'm curious how you guys have digested that feeling if you got (laughs) into like more like 
maybe people aren't going to be as vocal about like supporting me. So like, it might not seem like I'm being appreciated, but then like, I'll check my DMs and like, there's a bunch of like people, like for me mainly right now, it's about representation because like, I think it's really cute that like, I get DMs all the time. They're like, I've never seen a, a black content creator that's like also dark skin and also makes funny videos and like also does this. It's like, cause like for me, Nima was that person for me. Like I used to watch her YouTube videos and be like, like I, I want that. So like for me, I try to like, expel the negative because I'm a really like perpetual overthinker. So I'm like, just go for it because in the end of the day, hopefully it'll pay off. And if it doesn't, like you still know yourself that you did, you did the most and you did what you could do. And if, whether or not you get it, you deserved it. So. Yeah. I agree. I think it is all about representation because whenever I first joined TikTok, Sarah, for you, it was me or for me, it was you seeing, you know, this young black, women do like all these creative things and just like say like whatever comes to her mind and just make it comedic I was like wow I didn't know I didn't know we could do this on this platform and so um whenever you see like other white creators do literally the exact same thing as black creators or even like completely copy them without credit because you see that a lot on TikTok it is really disheartening but it also goes to show how much power we have you know how much our voice impacts an entire community even if the person that really takes it off didn't create it so i think it really is about representation because if we weren't here what would where would where would these platforms be Mm -hmm. yeah and i think for me um i feel like it's so much more than me so i feel like i never really think about it as in the world of like um a white creator will take my messaging and like um get more recognition for it because me the way that i see it is i'm fighting for black women's beauty to be represented and to be appreciated and accepted in the beauty industry so i honestly as long as i'm touching that one little black girl that's like i mean oops sorry (laughs) that's like i'm beautiful too my skin is beautiful too and like I can do everything that these billboards and these models and all these girls that don't have my skin tone, I can feel just as beautiful as they look. I think that's really what it is for me. So I've never really thought about it in a world of like, it is frustrating, don't get me wrong. It is frustrating when you see someone completely rip off and fight. No one will fight for you and your story and your beauty better than you can. So I think that's really what always brings me back to center. And of course, all the DMs that I'm less like, they're like, I've never really felt as beautiful now as I do whenever you I see you doing this. I think those are like the ones that are just like, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm doing. And that's that. Yeah. Like it's always harder to walk on a road that's never been paved on. So like it's like mm-hmm. I will accept it. And like those little messages. Oh my god, the first time I forgot those messages, because like I have a hard time realizing that like I affect people. So like first time I got that message and they were like, Oh my god, you're dark skin, like you make me feel pretty. Or like people that post their pictures and they tag me and they're like, You make me feel pretty. And I'm like, Good, like that's what, that's what we want. So like I will accept the difficulties and like the the extra challenges it might take for me to like, as long as like those people can see that and be like, I can do it. Or like, I can at least try. And she did it. So it's, it's yeah. Me. <laughs> I have a very similar feeling too. I mean, for me, um, I know, like I said earlier that I'm just going to keep doing YouTube because I, this is me. Um, at the same time, also, I remember what it was like for me to be a young, you know, queer kid. And I would close my eyes and try to like envision a future for myself. And I literally never could. I, that, that reality of a, a, a trans adult just didn't exist to me. Um, and of course, when you're in that position, there's a lot of really dark stuff that will come up, you know, thinking that you, you don't have a future, you don't have a, a way of existing in this world. And one of the big things that keeps me going is knowing that I am that for a lot of young, especially black trans and queer kids. Um, they can look at me and see someone, you know, who, you know, I think I'm a hot ass mess, but you know, I come off as I guess together and they appreciate that and they can see themselves in me. And suddenly that teenager who at one point closed their, their you know eyes and literally couldn't imagine any future for themselves can look at me and see, well, Kat's doing fine. 
Um, and, and, and I know that like, see, for me, I just look, I started YouTube 2005. YouTube was a very different platform. I, it, I was literally just coming and turning on my computer and talking, but much like Sarah said, I didn't really understand the impact that that had. I didn't really understand how me just being on the platform can make people feel so seen. Um, I'll never forget. Um, I did a couple of videos with, um, Buzzfeed and, um, the first one I did was about pronouns and uh, there's a longer, darker story and sad story with that because that video actually led to me getting evicted, um, which I won't get into. It was a really sad thing. Um, but I was, I was, I was essentially outed and, and evicted because I participated in that. Um, and it was a really sad moment for me. And when I gave a talk at, um, I was in Colorado, I was in Boulder, Colorado, giving a talk and one of the kids came up to me and they said, um, hey, I saw your video on BuzzFeed and it helped me understand that I was trans. And even though for me that 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 experience was such a, a sort of uh, upsetting one because I you know got evicted da 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 because I was in the video, um, I realized in that moment how important it was for me to continue to be there, you know, to, for that so that other kids can see themselves. So. I definitely, I, I definitely love that each of us are, are that, that for somebody, you know, and that's definitely something that keeps me on, on there. So, yeah. So now um, we're going to go through some of the, um, the audience questions. We've got 20 more minutes. We're at the 40 minute mark. So I'm just reading through some of these and seeing some that fit in. Um, how do you handle stress going on in the world? I, I think that's a, that's a good one. How do you guys handle stress? What do you guys do to like, like keep yourselves like not stressed out? Um, personally, I sew, I sew most of my clothes and sewing is one of the biggest things after later today, I'm, I'm washing my hair and I'm going to braid my night. And that's one of the most therapeutic things I do is literally just sitting down watching Netflix and just braided all my hair. So I'm curious what you guys do to relieve stress. I learned how to crochet, so now I crochet. <laughs> I, know, I saw you crocheting in our um in our uh, rehearsal, and I was like, oh my god, that's so cute. Yeah, I I realized that's like a really good like I'm I overthink a lot, and so like when I see like stressful things, I like think about it for a long time. So then like when you're crocheting, you have to pay attention to your pattern. Mm -hmm. Like it does become mindless, but like you. So like, it's nice to like, it's like a brain empty, no thoughts. <laughs> it's a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Do you do your Buddhas in the back too? Oh yes. Oh my God. My mom <laughs> made them. Your mom? Oh. I know they're so cute. I was like, I haven't seen them in so long. Oh. You have so many. I should send you some. You have so many. <laughs> <laughs> See, I wish I knew how to cornrow because I don't know how to braid my own, like, like flat braid my own hair. And I would do crochet if I could, but I've tried and I just, I've just decided it's not in it. It's just not in me, you know, so. <laughs> I can't watch movies and do my nails and color. That's mm -hmm. like my escape. Cause like when you watch movies, you kind of have to focus on it. And it kind of, movies are like designed to take you into this whole nother world. So it's just kind of like right here, right now. And that's it. Mm -hmm. I really got into painting this pandemic. Wow, this quarantine, that just made me sad for a second. But um, <laughs> I really got into like printing out portraits of like my friends and like sitting down with like a little mini canvas and just painting for like four hours straight. And I will, you know, put away my phone and just get out like these teeny little mini brushes and just like paint all the details. And it's like, it's mindless, like Sarah said for your crocheting, but you still have to pay attention to detail. And um, Kat, I actually, was heavy in sewing last year too. So I understand just the helm of the sewing machine and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah, that's what I've been doing to really relieve stress. Yeah. It's, it's really helpful to take yourself away from, from stuff. Like, like literally all the things I described, they forced me to like not be in front of my computer. I can't be on camera, you know, I'm sewing and creating. So yeah, I love I love that we're all creative in our our, our stress our stressless time. Um, but, um, I'm really curious how you guys all feel about YouTube currently. Um, how you feel the platform is doing, and if it's um, you still see it as a way of enacting change. Because um, I know for some creators, um, YouTube has felt antagonistic towards them, and I'm curious 
how a lot of you guys personally feel about the platform right now. I personally, I don't think I've ever had a more positive relationship with YouTube. Um, whenever they've invited me to um, talk to them, I would usually read them for filth and tell them what's wrong. And I don't, I was like, I don't know why you guys keep inviting me because I'm just going to yell at you. Um, <laughs> but for the first time in a while, I have not really had a lot of issues with YouTube and I think they're doing a pretty good job. So I'm, I'm curious um, how you guys all currently feel about the platform. Um, I feel like it's hard for me because I'm still like in the world of YouTube, I'm still technically a newbie um, because I've been on the platform for going on four years now. And I feel like people have been on the platform for like way longer, like you, like yourself. So um, I've only seen what people would say are the newer changes. And that's just kind of my normal. So I'm not really sure how to like compare it to back then, like 10 years ago or something like that. So I don't know much about YouTube because I'm not on the in the YouTube world, yes, but I know that um, yeah, <laughs> but TikTok? I know that on TikTok, TikTok is full of about every voice that you can find. Really, I've learned so much about different cultures that I would have never known if they had not gone on TikTok because it's really an open place for every kind of culture, every kind of like perspective to come on and like tell their own story or tell what's happening in their country, in their world. So that's really what's made TikTok such a active place for uh, different perspectives. Like for a hot minute, my For You page has just been black people. And I think it's really funny and it's really cool. And like, um, I've been watching YouTube since I was, since 20, I've been on the internet for too long. <laughs> Maybe yeah, I was like crazy. <laughs> almost because I'm only 19 but like I remember like when we got our family computer because we had a computer room I used to watch YouTube all the time and I can tell like there's been a shift in content which is nice because maybe uh, shift for the better <laughs> and so, like the content I was consuming at that time was probably not the best for me and so it's cool to see like how much like progressed and how much like diverse content is out there and like good people seem to be moving to the forefront and it's really cool to see that now especially yeah. like 2020. Yeah, it's been really interesting. TikTok, I love. It's the first app that I, I've just gone on there and like, I just, so many people, I found so many people like me, like so fast. That was the biggest thing for me. It was like, my For You page, like for a little bit, it was like a little difficult. And of course, like people are gonna make comments, like people are colorist. We have to deal with it on the daily. And so like, I would deal with that. But then it was like expeditiously that I found like other other dark skins and like other black people and it was really fun so I I feel like they're moving in the right direction mm. yeah actually on the on that thought about the algorithm I'm I'm very very curious about your guys's what you guys get in your feed because I hear all the time I don't know how to find black youtubers where are all the black youtubers where are all the black creators and it's not like I don't understand some of that, but for me, I go on my, my, my feed is black. Um, so, and I think it's I, I interact and I talk to and I post it on people's stuff. And I think sometimes people don't always know that if you want to get more black stuff in your feed, you got to comment, you got to like, you got to subscribe, you got to show YouTube or even TikTok that you like this stuff, that you want these things. So I'm really curious um, how you guys have been, how your personal algorithm is, and if if it's like mine, because this whole, I don't know where the black people are thing is very confusing to okay. me, because I, I, I see them. <laughs> I think it's like you have to actively curate your feed. Like you have to actively yeah. search for the people that you want. I think um, I tell a story all the time about how when I first came to LA, I was looking for a trainer. So I just put trainer in LA and I was mm -hmm. scrolling, like not that I was intentionally looking for a black person, but I started scrolling. I didn't find any black people on the feed, like just typing in trainer in LA. So then I was like, okay, black trainer in LA. And then that's when I found it. So you have to actively curate your feed. You have to comment, you have to like, you have to just like interact. And um, that's how I've been able to uh, get on my explore page. And I'm like, black people. <laughs> yeah. Because like, for my YouTube, I was right before I got in here, I was watching Tunerific Tariq, which is like, he's a black animator. He's like, he's really cool. And then like, I have D'Angelo Wallace, like my entire like recommended, re recommended is all black people. And it's the same for like my For You page. I think it's just because we interact so much. And those are the people that like we tend to talk to and relate to about more. And so like, at first, yeah, I kind of get it. Like, there weren't that many black people, but also like the more we see each other, the more we want to join platforms. So I feel like there's 
more in general now. Yeah. Yeah. I think that uh, what you said, Nima, about like curating your platform, do you ever, um, you know, go on Pinterest or wherever, if you're looking for like a hairstyle or something, you type in braid and then you have to search again and type in <laughs> black woman braids yeah. every time for like whatever. I think it's the same exact thing. Um, you have to, especially on TikTok, you have to be in those comment sections, share, watch like all the way through whenever you find a black creator so that they'll show up again and show up again and again. And um, yeah, that's that's what I do. A lot of times I do type in black aesthetic or, you know, uh, things that are very, very niche so that I get them in my FYP. Yeah, I think some people just, they need to know that you need to do that. Like I remember um, Jackie went on a, a rant about this recently, which I love because I, I, there we're there you know and and if you interact with our stuff you will find more if you're somebody who's saying oh why is it my feed more black it's probably because you're not interacting with those those channels um so we are getting closer and closer to the end um i wanted to ask this question it's one of the audience questions and i think it's a really good one um how do you guys define success what does success on youtube or tiktok or where, wherever what does that what does that look like for you because i know it's all it's probably all different for all of us um i i was kind of i don't know because like my whole life i've kind of like i was supposed to do like the buy the books things so I supposed to go to, i've completed uh, ah, i've completed high school going to university for computer software engineering i was supposed to work a nine to five that didn't end up happening kind of glad, very happy that I didn't do that because I'm like doing the stuff that I enjoy. But like success, I guess, means consistency and like joy in what you do. I'm kind of like kind of torn because like if success is like being good all the time, then like is life really good that good? I don't know. Like you need to go down before you go up. So like if you're consistently going up, isn't it scarier for you to go down? So I, I don't know. Maybe consistency. That's my answer. <laughs> I, I I feel like maybe because it's like I'm just a little bit older, I'm okay with my definition of success changing as mm -hmm. life goes on. Like my definition of success three years ago when I started my YouTube channel was a million subscribers. Now my definition of success is how am I really changing and impacting, you know? It's okay for success to change and it's okay for success to mean different things in different parts of your life. Like success for my personal life is fixing and making sure my anxiety and depression days are less than they are, you know, but success for my financial life is whatever that dollar amount number is. And that's okay. And I think it's okay to have that, like, it's okay to have that relationship with success where it can mean different things in different aspects of your life. I feel like uh, not having a set definition of success is really interesting because um, an idol of mine really is Maya Angelou because she was never, ever one thing throughout her life. Like we know her as a poet, but she was, she was all these different things throughout her life. And I think that we can learn from her that success is really growing no matter what, not staying in one place. So like if I'm here five years from now, I wouldn't say that's a success. I want to grow. I want to keep on growing and elevating. And so success to me is Nima what you said making that impact and making sure that you're bettering yourself so that you can better things around you yeah success for me has been um I don't know like it's changed a lot it's definitely changed a lot like I used to be all sad that I didn't have a ton of subscribers and you know sometimes I still feel sad about that but that's never really been important to me I've always been the kind of person who likes to be better than what I was before. So like every one of my videos, I like to think that I'm upping the game just by doing something new and different. And if I manage to get something together and, and, and get it up and, you know, if a hundred people watch it or, or a hundred thousand people watch it, to me, that's success. You know, I just love doing this. I love creating um, video for the internet. Um, and I just, I think it's really wild that I get to do it for a living, that it's what I do full time now. You know, it's, it's, it's funny how that, that works out. Um, so yeah, um, on that note, we are in the last seven minutes and I wanted to ask you guys where you guys think you're going to be next year and, 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 and what sort of thing would you like to see in the next year? I know 2020 has put us through it. 
but I would like to think I would, you know, what? I don't, maybe this is me being too optimistic. The occasional moment where I'm being optimistic. I would like to think that 2021 is going to be, you know, like a little bit better. I want 2021 to give black people a break. I think we're tired and yes. we a break. Yes. Yes. I 2021, I just want it to be uh, better managing of like mental health and prioritizing myself, but also, yeah, that break we were talking about, that'd be nice. <laughs> 2021, the break, definitely. <laughs> and um, I think I want to have like a plan. Like whenever we're out of this, I want to be like, okay, let's go. You know, I'm ready now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gone. Oh, I'm so new to this and like this whole like content creation and like online like platform and stuff. It's like, I feel so much pressure to be like moving quickly and to like yeah. progress quickly and also like develop quickly. And I, I'm like, I barely like, I'm trying to figure out a plan right now. Like at least to go loosely off of. I don't really follow plans well, but like, I like to have a little bit of direction. <laughs> so, like, the same the way that's grown really quickly on the platform is it's okay to slow down and it's okay to like it's it's really okay to slow it down honestly sometimes I think it's best to slow down so that you can catch up and really feel because sometimes it feels like you're just like flying out the window and you just don't even know you can't even control it so it's okay to like be like it's okay to slow down it's okay to have a slow day take that as a win sometimes thank you thank you um all right oh I'm sorry I said you guys have been so knowledgeable. Like, <laughs> right. It's nice I feel to like talk to people that have been on. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed this conversation and, and valued everybody's input. You guys are giving me a lot to think about, a lot to talk about. We are going to be continuing this discussion on the VidCon Discord server. Um, so if you guys would like to keep talking about that. Um, you know, that that's where you go. I, I, I don't even know what a Discord is, but I've heard it's a good time. <laughs> um, but um, thank you everybody for coming and joining us here. I think we're going um, to end this as we get closer and closer to two o'clock. Um, I just wanted to ask anyone if they had any um, final, final thoughts, final things to share before we sign off and, and hop onto the Discord. I don't know. I mean, thank you for putting on here. Thank you for watching. I mean, if you're <laughs> <laughs> like, that's been cool listening to us um yeah this is definitely different I think this is my first zoom panel that I've ever been on so yeah it's my first one too yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I think thank it you so much <laughs> thank you guys all so much for coming um and yeah I guess we're gonna end this here then thank yeah. you so much we'll talk to you guys on discord bye